Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes and welcome to an introduction to seventh chords for the saxophone. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the chords on the E flat alto saxophone, but the exercises I provide on this tutorial, including with a backing track, will also be duplicated for the B flat saxophones. Let's first of all look at what is a seventh chord. If we take a G major scale, that's the notes G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp and G. That sounds like this. Now if we assign numbers to each one of those notes in ascending order, G would be 1, B would be 3, and D would be 5. So the first, third and fifth notes in a G major scale are G, B, D. Now, if we could strike those notes at the same time like we can on a piano or a guitar, those three notes played together form a G major chord. Today, we're interested in learning a G seventh chord. Now, the formula for a G seventh chord is the same as that for a major, that is, it's one, three, five, but you add in the seventh note of the scale, flattened a semitone. So if you recall the G scale, the seventh note would have been F sharp. We have to flatten that F sharp, a semitone, and that'll bring it back to F natural. Now if we play the first, third, fifth, and seventh flattened notes together, G, B, D, and F, it'll sound like this. And that's a G7th arpeggio on the E flat alto sax. Remember, we can't ever play a chord as such on any of the wind instruments. We can only play one note at a time on the wind instruments. So we end up playing what is called an arpeggio, a broken chord. Okay, so if G7th is G, B, D, and F, in a 12 bar blues, we'll also need to learn how to play a C7th chord. So we go through the process again. A C major scale would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If we look for the first, third, and fifth notes in the C scale, we'll find that those notes are C, E, and G. And that's the notes of a C major chord. We need to add the seventh note, which was a B natural, flattened, so it becomes a B flat into the equation. So one, three, five, seven flat in the key of C produces the notes C, E, G, and B flat, and they form a C seventh chord. Now finally for today's tutorial, the other seventh chord we need to complete the 12 bar blues is a D seventh chord. D is the scale that has two sharps in it, F sharp and C sharp. So a D major scale will sound like this. So D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. The notes in a D major chord would be the first, third, and fifth notes from that scale. That is D, F sharp, and A. The seventh note flattened, well the seventh note was C sharp, if we flatten it it becomes C natural. So a D seventh chord will be D, F sharp, A and C. Let's put the knowledge we've just learnt to the test. This first play along exercise that I'm going to put up on the screen in a moment will take you through the three seventh chords that we've just learnt, G seventh, C seventh and D seventh and they'll be in a standard 12 bar blues chord progression format. Now this first exercise is for the E flat saxophones. Following that, I'll play the same exercise for the B flat saxophone. So if you're a tenor or soprano sax player, just wait till the next exercise, or if you're quite advanced with your transposition, you'll be able to work out what the equivalent chords are for when the alto sax is playing in the key of G, what they will be for you on the B-flat sax. I'll let you work that out if you are advanced enough to try and play along with the alto sax. 
For those of you who aren't, just wait because the next exercise will be in your key for the B-flat instruments. Okay, so there'll be a six click count in at 135 beats a minute. We've got a top quality acoustic piano, acoustic bass, and acoustic drum kit behind us. See if you can find your way through the G7 blues. I'll be playing with the alto sax the lead for you to play along with on the first repeat of the song, but on the second repeat, I'll be silent and you can play the exercise on your own. Okay, here we go. How did you go? Hopefully you could read those notes at the speed of 135 beats a minute quite comfortably. And also when the lead track stopped, I hope that you were able to play along on your own and solidly play those seventh chords with the correct notes in the correct order. Okay, for all the B flat players out there, so grab your soprano or tenor saxophone. Here's the same exercise in the same key, but with the backing band transposed now into the B flat transposition for you to play along with. Six count ins, then grab your tenor or your soprano and play the exercise on the screen. I really encourage you to experiment with the notes of the seventh chords in all sorts of different orders. You could play the very exercise we've just had on the screen in descending order, then ascending. So instead of playing the exercise like this, turn it upside down and start with the highest note, the F natural, walk your way down the chord, then back up. So in the blank space where I don't play the lead along on those tracks, you can just rewind this video and play the reverse of the exercise as I've got it written the second time through. Just try and develop a real muscle memory for the four notes that make up the seventh chords and the G7, C7 and D7 in this case. Remember there are 12 possible seventh chords. Eventually you need to learn all of them and become just as competent on a A flat seventh chord as you are on a G7 chord. Okay, to finish this tutorial today, I've got a slightly more advanced exercise. This time we're going to jumble the order of the notes a little keeping the same speed of 135 beats a minute. But instead of playing the seventh chord either just ascending or descending, so instead of we're going to play a riff that uses just the same notes but varies the order of the notes a little bit, like this. So that becomes more of like a, a jazz motif or a jazz riff. Now, we have to change that riff as the chords change to C7th and D7th. I've got the notes on the screen for you again. I will be playing a sample guide track, the first repeat of the, of the tune, but on the second repeat again, I'll stop playing 
and I'll leave that for you to freely improvise and test yourself on the notes of those chords. <laughs> And now the same exercise but transposed for the B flat instruments. Six count ins, grab your tenor or your soprano and try this exercise. I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to the fabulous sound of the seventh chords on the saxophones. There is so much to learn about chord progressions and the different chord families, but a great place to start, particularly on the saxophone, is to master the seventh chords. You'll find in blues, country, folk, jazz, rock and classical music, the seventh chord family and intricate knowledge of how to play any seventh chord in any inversion will hold you in good stead in your music making for the future. Bye for now.